Ufuk Dialog presents International Women's Day Online Conference. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to Ufuk Dialog's first virtual International Women's Day Conference. Women in Leadership, Peace Building, Education and Gender Equality. Ufuk Dialog is a non-profit organization geared towards the promotion of dialogue and a culture of coexistence. Ufuk Dialog is mainly concerned with the opinions and information exchange between ethnic, cultural, religious and ideological entities in order to nurture mutual understanding and peaceful coexistence. As we believe that women are the real architects of society, we are very grateful to our partners Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, National Council for Women's Society, Federation of Muslim Women's Association in Nigeria, Women Wing Christian Association of Nigeria, and Women's Right Advancement and Protection Alternative. <laughs> Her Excellency Dr. Hajo Sani is the Senior Special Assistant to President Muhammad Buhari on Women Affairs and Administration, Office of the First Lady. Hajia Saudatu Madi, MFR, is a women's rights advocate. She is the Secretary General of Women's Rights Advancement and Protection Alternative, RAPA. Let me start by congratulating Ufok uh, Dialogue for organizing this Made International Conference on Women in Leadership, Peace Building, Education and Gender Equality as part of the activities marking this year's International Women's Day. I'm particularly happy to join this conversation on gender question, the question on parity, equity, equality and inclusion. This event wishes to share on the issue of education and dialogue as essential ingredients in addressing gender equality in leadership and peace building. In recent times, gender parity issues have dominated discourse, especially as they relate to women in leadership. The challenges that women face both in government and business, even now in the 21st century, leave most to be desired. Let it, however, be noted that there has been considerable progress in many sectors. More women are now heads of governments, more women are now heads of agencies and businesses. But parity detects a bit more fairness in the allocation of power and opportunities for women and men. When we take a critical look at sensitive moments in human history, like the COVID-19 pandemic, it becomes clear that more women are now on the front lines of saving lives, but are not given the recognition they deserve for their sacrifices. For reasons beyond their control, women get challenged at work, at home, elsewhere. They therefore require support and protection to survive. That is why we are all happy with this year's theme of the International Women's Day that says, Hush, choose to challenge. It's either you being challenged or you challenge the situation we as women find ourselves. Let me use this opportunity to call on stakeholders to join forces and come up with new strategies for this support and protection. In Nigeria, Bandits and insurgents see women as soft targets and abduct them. In most cases, even abusing their femininity. At other times, their husbands are killed and they are rendered into widowhood with responsibility to cater for the remaining extended family members. So what is it that could prefer a woman for a resilience required to survive in today's world. The word empowerment, and it has tentacles in education and fortitude. Education has now and has over the years afforded women the power to break many barriers and reach 
on imaginable heights. It has sustained their struggle for recognition and provides a web of conscience among women to think and act as one. Empowered women are able to live uh, sustainable lives, solve their economic problems and financial struggle. We need to therefore continue to insist on the education of the girl child so that we have stronger, more resilient women to represent uh, the future. There is also a need for concerted efforts to mentor the girl child to be advocates of uh, peace, peaceful coexistence and peace building and be part of the peace building. Education, as we all know, is a vehicle for social change and development. I look forward to the communique of this conference, which I believe can be shared to the public and all stakeholders that have not been part of this conversation so that we can move forward and be able to address issues that are already confronting the social, economic and political development of women in general. And also, women will come out strongly to choose the challenge of all these stereotypes, sociocultural issues that are impending on their way of development and advancement as human beings. Thank you very much. Her Excellency Dr. Mrs. Olufolake Abdurazak is the First Lady of Kwara State. She is a diplomat, an international trade and investment expert, a humanitarian and a gender and development advocate. Born in the city of Lagos, southwest Nigeria, Dr. Olufolake Abdurazak had her early education in the United States of America, holds a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Lagos, 1988. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be part of this International Conference on Women Leadership. I commend UF-UK Dialogue and other partners for sustaining the conversation on the inclusion of women in leadership as a key step towards personal and social reforms. Women's full and effective participation and leadership in all areas of life drives progress for everyone. Yet, according to a recent report by the United Nations Secretary General, women are still underrepresented in public life and decision making. As the report revealed that at the current rate of progress, gender equality among these spheres may take another 130 years. The inclusivity of women in leadership equally entails granting women equal access to and control over social, political, and economic resources, and ensuring they can use them to exert increased control over other areas of their lives. Although it has been demonstrated that women have ample innovative and leadership cap capacities that they bring to different experiences, perspectives, and skills to the table, and make germane contributions to decisions policies and laws, the new barriers that have arisen as a result of the pandemic, in addition to the pre-existing social and systemic barriers, hinder their participation and leadership in the public life of their communities. The observance of this year's International Women's Day, however, apart from celebrating the achievement of women around the world, brings to the fore the significance of women involvement in global development. This year's theme, Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, however, provides an opportunity for us to transform this momentum into action, to empower our women on all fronts, and to celebrate those who are working tirelessly to ensure that our women realize their full potentials. As the world continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, a key contributor to a more equal COVID-19 world is increasing women's access to leadership roles. You will agree with me that women need to be granted more involvement in the development and implementation 
of COVID-19 response plans as they are more likely to consider the disproportionate impact that the pandemic is having on women and girls. And I'm sure you will agree with me that also in countries where women have had a leadership role in, in looking at the responses in, to the pandemic, we have seen great successes achieved. And these are examples that we should follow. While we primarily unite today in the spirit of celebration, we also must rededicate ourselves on many fronts. We must strive to ensure that all women can achieve their ambitions with equality in return. We must continue to denounce all forms of violence in our society, especially those against women in consonance with what is obtainable in other parts of the world. As women, there is a wellspring of pride in knowing that we are also willing to support one another and seek to obtain maximum benefit from our capabilities. Women from all walks of life want and deserve an equal future free from stigma, stereotypes, and violence. A future that's sustainable, peaceful, with equal rights and opportunities for all. To get us there, the world needs women at every table where decisions are being made. When women lead, we see positive results. Some of the most efficient and ex exemplary responses to the COVID-19 pandemic were led by women. I'm thinking of Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, Angela Merkel, German Chancellor, Tsai Ing-wen, President of Taiwan, amongst others. To mention a few, these women displayed good leadership in managing the outbreak of the pandemic. Also women, especially young women, are at the forefront of diverse and inclusive movements online and on the streets for social justice, climate change and equality in all parts of the world. Yet, women under 30 are less than 1% of parliamentarians worldwide. This is a trend that needs to change. And as we are marking this year's Women's International Day, it is important that we look inward to make these adequate changes to these problems. Ladies and gentlemen, today provides an opportunity for us to declare support for women assuming leadership roles as a means to achieving an equal future. This could include actions such as challenging stereotypes, calling out abusive behavior, and supporting women's successes. It is therefore imperative for us to impress on our society, to utilize every opportunity, such as presented by the commemoration of this day, to seriously do some introspection and come up with useful suggestions on how to harness the innate capabilities of our women by allowing them to flourish just as their male counterparts. It is my resolve through my office, Office of the First Lady of Kwara State, and the Ajike People's Support Center, a, an initiative which I founded and which I have utilized to impact the lives of the indigent and less privileged in society, to continue to support the social and economic advancement of our women and youths in the state. And we will not relent in ensuring that we continue to promote the cause of people of the state through lending our voice to advocacies encouraging entrepreneurship and promoting the well-being of our people to complement the efforts of government in these areas. I commend the conveners of this conference and I urge you to continue to sustain this advocacy. We should all actively choose to challenge stereotypes, fight bias and broaden participations, improve situations and celebrate women's achievements. It is only through this that we can truly attain an equal future. I thank you for listening. Dr. Bakuti Bakut is the Director General of the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, IPCR. Prior to that, he was the Director of Research at the IPCR. Dr. Bakut holds a PhD in International Relations from the Nottingham Trent University, United Kingdom. On behalf of the Dominion Council, management and staff of the Institute for Peace 
and conflict resolution. I congratulate OFU Dialogue Foundation on this occasion of the 2021 International Women's Day. This day is indeed unique, not only for the women, but for the entire humanity. They remind us of the roles and significance of women as state builders and global peace builders. The significance of this day, therefore, captures the mind and soul of Ufuk Dialogue Foundation, whose vision is to promote love and tolerance among ethno-cultural and religious diversities of the human society. I therefore congratulate the president of Ufuk Foundation for not only identifying with the women cause, but submitting and standing as a gender champion to promote and take inclusive actions that promote the rights of women. May this year celebration become a milestone of success on global action and towards ending all forms of gender discrimination and violence against women. Happy International Women Day. Jamre Uker is the UN representative and the US director of the Journalists and Writers Foundation, JWF, an international civil society organization dedicated to the culture of peace, human rights, and sustainable development. Ms. Uker organizes international events for the implementation of the UN Sustainable Development Goals for a positive social change. Good afternoon. I'm Jemma Ilkert, the UN representative of the Journals and Writers Foundation. It is a great pleasure to be a part of this important program from New York, the first international conference on women in leadership organized by Ufuk Dialogue. The theme of today's conference underlines three important areas where women's participation makes a long lasting and transformative change to establish inclusive societies for all peace building, education, and gender equality. And I would like to share my remarks today on women's meaningful participation and contribution to the peace building. Since the end of 2019, our global community has been combating COVID, a worldwide health crisis that took the lives of over 2.5 million people. Even though it has surely been a life-threatening situation for everyone, I believe we also had very important lessons learned from this pandemic. We once again experienced the difference that solidarity among local and global communities make during the times of crisis. We saw the opportunities that online engagement initiatives created to empower youth, women, and marginalized individuals. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, women have served at the front line to combat COVID-19, contributed to the disease responding mechanisms, and continued to be the crucial stakeholders of sustainable development and peace building. The past year has shown us the enormous value of unpaid care, domestic work, and unproportional burden on the shoulders of women. Women's Peace and Security Agenda is endorsed by several UN Security Council resolutions. The Resolution 1325 is an important landmark document among those. It underlines the importance of women's full and equal participation in conflict resolution and peace building. The resolution calls on member states and civil society organizations to strengthen collaboration in increasing women's meaningful participation in conflict prevention. But besides the roadmap and the recommendation of such intergovernmental documents, I also acknowledge the real challenges. Voices of women are essential to reveal violence against women and girls during the times of conflicts. However, the current pandemic is creating additional profound obstacles as the violence against women is reported to increase throughout the globe, which makes women's participation in peace building even more difficult due to the marginalization. Yen figures show that uh, women's inclusion in formal and informal peace processes is far from equal. 
women only make up to 6% of signatories and 13% of negotiators. While women have made important inroads into political offices across the world, World Bank data indicates that their representation in national parliaments is still at 25%, which is far from parity. Despite the well-known challenges, we as human rights advocates, global citizens who promote women's rights and girls' empowerment have to keep up with our efforts to increase women's critical participation in this area because many country cases show that our presence in ceasefires and peace building is proven to be substantially long lasting. Preventing conflict and sustaining peace depends on addressing the root causes of the instability among the societies, which increases women's exclusion and gender equality. In order to work on the successful policy changes, gender quotas should be applied as an effective means of reducing the gap in the political presence of women in formal and informal processes. Women peacemakers should be provided with specific support in the negotiating delegations on key thematic issues. More gender advisors should be appointed to ceasefire discussions and peace talks. Peace building policies should address the differentiated needs of women and girls. Women rights organizations and civil society efforts are the backbone of women's empowerment. The voices of such movements should be amplified as these institutions continue to raise awareness on the gender mainstreaming of peace processes. Opportunities should be created for more CSOs to present the best practices of women mediators. Women's full and equal participation at all levels of society is a fundamental human right. A meaningful participation in peace building requires a building block of access to resources, knowledge, formal training, social services, and the most importantly, financial support. For our global community to emerge from the pandemic more equal, resilient, aiming towards lasting and inclusive peace, we have to join our efforts to stand for women's empowerment in all spheres of public and political arenas. Let's not forget that women's rights is never an issue that concerns women and girls only. Gender equality and women's empowerment is a foundation for a peaceful, prosperous and a sustainable world. Thank you so much with my warmest regards from New York. Olufunke Barua is a seasoned Nigeria gender and development expert, feminist and public speaker with a focus on gender advocacy, women's rights, civil society, strengthening public policy and governance. For almost two decades, she has been at the forefront of social policies and reforms in Nigeria working with government, civil society and international development partners. She is renowned for her advocacy on the inclusion of females in strategic, political, social, and economic positions in Nigeria. Good afternoon. My name is Olufunke Barua, and I'm the program officer for gender, racial, and ethnic justice at the Ford Foundation Office for West Africa. Happy International Women's Day. It is my pleasure to address us all this day because every year the world celebrates the International Women's Day on March 8th. The theme for this year's day, as announced by UN Women, is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World. Furthermore, this year's theme aligns with the priority of the 65th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. Women's full and effective participation and decision-making in public life as well as the elimination of violence for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. It also coincidentally aligns with the theme for this conference by Ufu Dialogue, which is Women in Leadership, Peace Building, Education, and Gender Equality 2021. Equally important are the tremendous efforts by women and girls in, en in enhancing equality and contributing to a more effective and inclusive recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, 
as women make up the majority of frontline workers leading the COVID response. Still, women are excluded from leadership positions in the COVID-19 response teams at state and federal level. In Nigeria, the legal and policy framework on gender equality has been strengthened during the last decade. Nigeria has gone ahead to ratify nine of the 13 most significant international human rights conventions, including the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW. Another notable milestone is the passing of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act in 2015, which aims to protect individuals from all forms of violence. However, several challenges regarding women's rights remains. For example, the glass ceiling for women in political leadership still appears difficult to break. Women currently hold 5.8 and 7.3% of the seats in the House of Representatives and the Senate, respectively. This ranks Nigeria as 180 out of 193 countries regarding percentage of women in parliament and stands in stark contrast to the recommendation in Nigeria's national gender policy from 2006 for at least 35% of women in elective and appointive positions. What is more, there is yet to be a female governor for any of the 36 states or even a successful candidate for the presidency in Nigeria. This is not just a gender gap, this is a power gap. This power gap disenfranchises women and limits their ability to fully access economic opportunities. This power gap also threatens the democratic foundation of Nigeria when half of the population is marginalized from political representation. The lack of women in leadership positions may also impact the decisions that are taken and to what degree they take gender equality into account. UNDP and UN Women launched a COVID-19 global gender response tracker in 2020, which shows that 56% of the Nigerian government's policy measures to address the pandemic can be considered gender sensitive. This is still below the African and global average of 63 and 80% respectively. In Nigeria, there is especially a lack of gender considerations in social protection, as well as fiscal and economic policies. To uphold women's rights and fully leverage the potential of women's leadership in pandemic preparedness and response, the representatives and perspectives of women and girls in all of their diversity must be integrated in the formulation and implementation of policies and programs in all spheres and at all stages of pandemic response and recovery. So why do we think that leadership for women is important in Nigeria? The full inclusion of women in decision making has been identified as one of the key drivers to achieve sustainable development. She's an international sought after speaker. She's an accomplished facilitator of seminars and workshops to various companies and organizations in the areas of public speaking, team building, leadership and personal development. She is very engaged in her true passion, which is premarital and marital guidance and life coaching. She has spoken in many countries around the world. This is Mariam Lemu, and I want to talk about women in leadership. Now, I have been surrounded by many great role models, influencers and leaders. My parents top the list. However, I want to focus on the influence that my mother has had in my life. She taught me to be brave and courageous, to be tenacious and live in a world of possibilities. She taught me about contribution and being useful to others. She taught me to be a ray of sunshine. Now, one thing about my mother is she used all her unique strengths and multiple gifts that she had been blessed with to be an example to others. Now we all have role models, people whose footsteps we walk in, people who are leaders in our lives, and whether we like it or not, we are role models. We are leaders without titles. 
Now, whether we are ready or not, people are looking up to us, our children, our siblings, our neighbors, colleagues, somebody is watching us. They copy the way we walk, the way we talk, how we speak. They copy the things we accumulate, how we dress, the cars we drive, our good or our bad habits, the advice we give them. In other words, we are influencers in other people's lives. Now, Allah has described all human beings, men and women, as his khalifas, his ambassadors, his stewards. So in the eyes of our maker, all of us are leaders. All of us are his representatives, regardless of gender. And the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with him, took it a step further with a metaphor that's familiar to all faiths, and that is of the shepherd, that each one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. Again, no gender separation. Now, why I like this metaphor is it teaches us about personal responsibility. The shepherd has to be proactive, has to take the lead. It doesn't wait for the sheep to tell it where to go. Now, some of us have a small flock or a big herd. So many of us are responsible for a small flock like our families, our children, our neighbors, or a bigger flock, the influence we have in our communities, our places of work, or religious groups we may belong to while others have a big herd because of the political positions they hold or the offices they occupy. Now, if you ask me, the word leader can sometimes be disempowering. The belief that the few at the top are more powerful than the millions who put them there or that we need titles before we can make a difference. Now, being a role model is being a leader. Being an influencer is being a leader. An older sibling is a leader. Parents are leaders. Teachers are leaders. It's more progressive and more liberating, more empowering for us to recognize that we can all be leaders with our titles, shepherds to our flock. Being born a woman is already being a born leader, a born role model. What do we need titles for when we are already influencing generations as mothers of the nation and as the first school for our children? And our influence doesn't start or stop there. Women in leadership is not new to history or societies. One of the greatest women praised by Allah for her leadership was Bilqis, the Queen of Sheba. She was one of the early leaders of the opposition to injustice, and she led an army of over 20,000 men. And she was nominated by men and also by Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet wasallam, who is a leader and has been a huge influence in our lives until today. We have seen women excel in all walks of life, in education, as social media influencers, in trade and commerce, in medicine, law and other professions, in the film and entertainment industry. As heads of financial institutions, they hold key positions in the United Nations and as the head of the World Trade Organization. We have seen women excel as presidents and prime ministers like New Zealand and South Korea and other countries. We have seen our angel who has led Germany for the past 18 years with wisdom, humility, dignity, inclusiveness, compassion, and grace. She has become the pride of all good people, and she stood tall in a world dominated by men. I say angel because her name is Angela, which means angel. Women have led and excelled in the multiple roles they play. We do this balancing act of our career while ensuring we do not undermine the obligations to our family. If someone says women can't lead, then they are just pretending to sleep. No matter what you do, you won't be able to wake them up. Now, the obstacles that stop women from equal and fair access to opportunities was put in place by both men and women. However, clearing them is not unsurmountable. The general rule for all good shepherds is there should be justice, equity and inclusiveness and because many are concurrently disadvantaged we need to support the girl child education and help them in the pursuit of furthering their studies while we also help them in capacity building and skills acquisition we need to focus on supporting women in all areas and not let our biggest concern be the positions or the titles we hold why? Because we are all shepherds, we are all role models, we are all influencers, and we are all leaders without titles. So let us focus on our circle of influence, what we can do. We can inspire one another, we can uplift one another, we can enlighten one another, we can motivate one another.
Now the difference between an ordinary and an extraordinary shepherd is they focused on building themselves, their own capacity and building the capacity of those around them. They want to be better so they can do better. We should never stop learning, never stop evolving, never stop growing and developing our minds and our talents. Now, our Lord has equipped us with all the tools we need to live our best lives and be the most useful. Sadly, many of us look around at others and see what they're doing and feel we are disadvantaged because we weren't born to a certain family, we don't come from a particular region, or we didn't get a certain kind of education. We come up with all sorts of reasons and excuses why we cannot do, why we cannot be. We become professional excusiologists by saying, I can't do this because, or the reason why this can't happen is because of this or that. Now, all those we look up to and admire didn't wait for permission or make excuses. So much is wrong today because there are so many bystanders. Those who think they don't have what it takes to do or are waiting for a title to lead. They admire from a distance while they can do, they can be. If you catch yourself complaining or making excuses, check yourself because you've got what it takes. And don't be so busy dimming other people's lights who are ready to contribute, make a difference, however small. We rave about celebrities, musicians, reality stars, in spite of their flaws, yet the few around us that are trying to do something small, we judge, we condemn them, we pull them down. If you are so busy doing, you won't have time to point fingers. We've got enough opposition to end up being our own obstacles and our own problems. There is always something to do. There is always a need to be fulfilled. Now, there are two quotes I love. The first is, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. I take it a step further and I say, you are a problem yourself. And then you don't need a title to lead. It is simply about having the right intentions and making the right decision to just do it. Now, what are we teaching our children and all those looking up to us? What are we modeling? Now, each and every one of us has had someone influence us positively in our lives. In other words, someone who has been a role model to us and a leader. However, I want you to ask yourself, what and who are you to others? Are you significant in people's lives? Are you paying forward what someone else has done to you? Whose lives are you touching? Whatever you may be doing right now, improve upon it. Be more useful, make a more positive impact and be a stronger influence in the lives of people. If you already have skills, then put it to good use. Gathering useful knowledge is not our problem. It's making sure that the input produces the right output. Always compete with yourself to outdo yourself. I remember someone saying to me that they want to do this and that, but they don't have the right skills. These are just excuses. Modern technology has accorded us the luxuries of having information at the tips of our fingers. Turn your phone into your classroom. Get into online schools. Register for online courses, go on Coursera, Future Learn, Udemy, whatever it is, and buy relevant books, download audiobooks, go on YouTube, the best school in the world, watch TED Talk videos, join groups, do research on Google. Everything you need is already available and you've got what it takes. Now we all have battles to fight and we're all carrying various loads on our shoulders. However, whether we like it or not, like I said earlier, we are already role models. We are already leaders. Folks are watching us and copying us. We are a gift to the world from our maker and he has blessed us with multiple gifts. Now let us go out there and shine our light brightly for ourselves and for others. We don't need a title to lead. We are women. After all, Chief Dr. Mrs. Larabo Shoda, MNI, is the President National Council for Women's Societies, NCWS. Since 2016 to date, she was born in Kawo, Kaduna State. She attended St. Peter's Demonstration School and St. Faith's College for her primary and secondary education, respectively. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this program. And I want to congratulate uh, um, Ufuk Dialogue for this very laudable uh, program. I, I am happy that every year you people organize such programs to assist women, to enlighten women, on, especially on the International Women's Day, 
when women network, come together to find way forward for themselves. Um, women can no longer ignore the fact that the pandemic uh, laid bare existing inequalities in society and exasperated them too because the, uh, the pandemic actually um, exposed women, exposed the, especially the, the, the authorities to the inequalities that women face in, uh, in, in, in the world and in Nigeria in particular. It is also exposed, uh, exposed the, ex the absence of women in governance. Women are, you know, you can find very few women in governance, while at the same time reinforce the call to address our gender-based uh, uh, society. The consequences of uh, patriarchy, unequal power rel relations, we are also revealing during the pandemic. You know, so this is things that we are supposed to talk about during this um, International Women's Day. The type of exposure that uh, uh, we saw on women, things that are lacking in what women uh, are supposed to have. Male decision makers were in charge of all issues that disappropriately affected women and girls, exposing gender inequality in our society. However, it is not all doom and gloom for women. The global recognition of the impact of the pandemic and the unfair response can, can be said to be the first step to addressing the problem. That is the problem of inequality, the problem of lack of leadership, especially in government. This triggered an international and domestic dialogue around the issues. Government were forced to retrace their footsteps to strategize and operate a more inclusive response. There have been several discuss uh, discussion panels which, and we are having one now with uh, Ufuk Dialogue, debates and so on, calling from women-centered organizations such as National Council for Women's Societies, NCWS, for the government to adopt a gender-responsive approach in the following ways. Inclusion of women in decision-making and distribution processes for better and effective results. Leadership roles for women across all sectors. Partnership with women-centered organizations, associations, and groups across the 774 local government areas and the FCT. For mobilization, messaging, gathering of data, and distribution of palliatives. Federal and state female uh, uh, lawmakers should place women issues on legislative agenda. It should be at the uh, front burner all the time. Women in executive position should encourage conversation around budget review and new appropriations to ensure that decisions are gender sensitive. Decisions in the country must be gender sensitive. It is important for women to be in leadership posts to provide insights perspectives and into the need of their patriots, compatriots. Our voices must be heard. Women are part of the country. We constitute almost 50% of the population. So we, they, they must listen to us. Government must, must listen to us. We must be part of decision making. Thank you for listening. Hajia Saudetu Madi, MFR, is a women's rights advocate. She is the Secretary General of Women's Rights Advancement and Protection Alternative, RAPA. She has published over 20 books focusing on violence against women. She started her career as a classroom teacher before resigning in August 1989. She became the principal of the government girls' secondary school in Bauchi. On 12 April 1995, she was appointed acting registrar of the Abubakar Tatari Ali Polytechnic Bauchi and held the position till 11 November 1998 before she voluntarily retired. She is currently the Secretary General of Women's Rights Advancement and Protection Alternative, RAPA. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen and 
please allow me to observe all protocols and say happy International Women's Day to all of us. International Women's Day is celebrated every year. But this year, I find the theme very, very apt. Because for many years, we have done advocacy. For many years, we have sensitized. For many years, we have built capacities of women and girls. We have also supported women and girls to go into politics in Nigeria. We have supported women to be part and parcel of the political activities of Nigeria. However, that has all not yet translated into three fundamental things. First, is that equal opportunity to be Nigerian citizens, to enjoy equal opportunities to education, equal opportunities and responsibilities in peace building, equal and probably the best of opportunities to contribute to the development of Nigeria. And what, why do we have that? First, and which is all over the world, is about the index of education. For this to happen, for women to be given quality, or rather to be able to put up quality participation in the development of Nigeria, education is a non-negotiable. Our daughters must go to school. Fathers must work to give their daughters the equal and the right opportunity to quality education. Women must also rise up, organize, at every level of their lives to be part of what is in their immediate and remote environments. People say, what opportunities are you looking at? You are our mothers. They patronize us. You are our mothers. You are our sisters. But would you treat your mother the way you would treat your wife? Would you have your wife slapped, not appreciated? Or rather, would you have your mother not appreciated or slapped. Your wife is another person's mother, and your mother is another person's wife. So if you see her only as a woman dignified by God, created to support humanity, then her status does not matter. What matters most is what quality of life she is given by education, what protection she enjoys from domestic violence, from exclusion in the decisions that affect her life, and most importantly, her capacity to contribute to her environment and to her country. We keep saying women's political participation, women's inclusion. These are two inseparable words. As far as Nigeria is concerned, women's participation is registered and acknowledged. Women make more than 60% of the voters on polling days. Women defy all the odds of weather and health to be at polling booth, and they throw in ballots for the political parties of their choices. But even that choice has limitations. Some women have to vote for the party or for the candidate of their husbands. And the beauty of the theme of 2021 International Women's Day is that choice to challenge to challenge what we see as normal, to challenge what we see as inhibiting, stopping us from being where we should be, stopping us from giving what we should give to our country. That choice, that choice to challenge the norm or to challenge the stereotypes that govern our lives. We don't intend with that slogan to tip the tables or to turn the tables. We will not scatter tables. But we'll arrange it in such a manner that everybody, men, women, youth, persons with disabilities, and all vulnerable persons have the right to equal opportunity to contribute and to be in leadership positions and even on the tables that decide what life they lead. We choose to challenge exclusion. We choose to challenge tokenism. What we have in Nigeria today, our ah, women are ministers, women are minister of finance, women. But that's not enough. Numbers matter. Quantity and quality, as the Nigerian comedian Jaguar would say. He wants quantity, not quality. 
Nigerian women are quality. It is given. Wherever a Nigerian woman is serving today, just look by your right or your left. It's quality. So what we really are after is quantity. And when we get quantity, we expect to be held accountable. We are not just asking for numbers, because numbers mean a lot. Yeah. If we get numbers, we know it puts a responsibility on us to perform and to ensure that all those coming behind us are justified to ask for more numbers. So we choose to challenge tokenism. I choose to challenge tokenism. And how do we see that? We ask for changes in social and policy constructs, such that it becomes a given in a family that when a decision is being made, the girl or the woman of the family has a voice. When her community decides where to locate a well or where to locate a school, she is considered a part of that decision. Because a well is where they all go to, to fetch water. It should be within safety limits. She doesn't get waylaid, she doesn't get harassed, and she will come back and have time to bath herself with that same water. Because the history and the, the, the statistics we have show that a lot of women fetch water, but they never get enough to take their bath. So we must find ways by the social constructs around us to change them. Nobody is asking for positive cultures to go away. We choose to challenge negative culture. Negative culture that we know we don't want to apply to our daughters, but we allow it to be applied to the daughters. The elites in this country must wake up. What affects the women at the lower rung of society does not affect them, but they take the decisions for these women and we challenge them. I choose to challenge them, to put themselves in the shoes of those people who are below. I once had the privilege in 20, uh, 2007 to address faith and culture leaders. And we were then talking about the adoption of the African Union Protocol on the Rights of Women by Nigeria. And in 2003, the Maputo Protocol came into force and we were trying to get it domesticated in Nigeria. At that meeting, where I had over 80 clerics from Muslim and Christian faith, including traditional religion, we asked them, supposing you leave Lokoja where we were having the meeting, and you go back and you find that armed robbers had come into your house and raped your wife, would you help her get the morning treatment so that she does not have a pregnancy from an armed robber? Would you be willing to bring up an armed robber's child? Where does it end for an armed robber's child? What would you do to avoid it? And a lot of them rejected the notion. God forbid they said, ah, I beg, don't say that. Yes, it is possible. Because when it happens to you, only then does it become an issue. What I'm asking is to choose, make a choice of those rights, of those privileges being the right of everybody, especially vulnerable women and children. Peace is also an important thing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Health, education, peace. And an educated woman is a guarantee to all of these three. An educated woman will know, even if you don't allow her to participate in, public, in the public space, she's still a good product in her home. Her health matters. When a woman has malaria, I think the whole family is having malaria. Food won't come on time. The children won't get ready in time. Of course, that's probably when you may want to start as a man thinking of, maybe I can help, but to what extent and for how long? So it is in our best interest that women are healthy, that women have access to health, that women have access to health information. It is also important that women are taken on board in peace building activities. Women know where the shoe pinches. When the war comes, it is our husbands, it is our sons, it is our, our, our nieces and our neighbors that are the first victims. Unfortunately, we see even new trends. Peace for women is no longer just about their husbands dying. It is about them being taken as hostages. As we speak, over 2,000 Nigerian girls and, and boys are in the hands of uh, bandits, terrorists, and so on. The Chibo girls remain a forgotten number, except that we choose to keep their memory alive. 
Gay Sharubu is still out there. The girls from Zamfara are still out there. The boys, some of the boys from Kassan State are still out there. How can mothers sleep when their children are out there in the hands of who they do not know? But when you involve them in peace, monitoring peace, peace is not the absence of war as we all know, but peace begins from within our families. And if women have contributions to make, first is monitoring. Monitoring their sons and husbands. If your husband stays out late and you cannot account for his presence, you want to know. Probably he's contriving with somebody. If your son stays out late, maybe he or she, or rather he, is contriving. A woman will have that first-hand information, that first-hand capacity to know and to pull back her son and say, hey, 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 or to pull back her husband. She could actually get her son out of it, but her husband, she needs to persuade. She needs to persuade. But in the name of peace, there is no price. Every price can be paid for peace. And women and, and, and children are the worst affected by the absence of peace. So if we benefit, if we lose, it is to be a matter of the choices we make. If we choose to leave 50% of the beneficiaries of development, 50% of possible contributors to development, then we are shortchanging nobody but Nigeria and ourselves. I use the occasion of the 2021 International Women's Day slogan to ask all Nigerians to choose to protect women, to choose to educate women, to choose to challenge the social norms and constructs that exclude women from leadership, that exclude women from public spaces that they can make contributions. Nigeria is blessed. Nigeria is blessed by men and women, but also by women who have proven themselves across the world. Let Nigeria make a choice of giving its women and girls equal opportunity. Let Nigeria choose to challenge and to work hard to dislodge those social constructs that limit the capacity and the participation of women and girls in leadership and in the development of our country. And to all women across the world, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. My name is Dickness Mrs. Victoria Bola Solo, the National Chairperson of Women Wing of Christian Association of Nigeria, Wowikan. International Women's Day goes beyond showing appreciation to women who have stood up to be counted. It's part from, it starts from the woman unrecognized who takes care of the home to others who have challenged every stereotype and society norms. Women like Oprah Winfrey, Megan, Elaine Salif Johnson, Chimamanda, Adichie, Malala, Mother Teresa, who was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize in 1979 for her tireless humanitarian work on behalf of the poor and ailing in Calcutta, also biblical women like Esther and Deborah. This year's observation of International Women's Day falls at a time when our country, Nigeria, and the world faces many global challenges from climate change to COVID-19 pandemic, terrorism, and banditry. However, the day's focus is on women in leadership, achieving equal future in a COVID-19 world. Although in the past decades, we have come a long way and seen good progress made on women's rights and leadership around the world. For example, we now have girls going to school, reduce female genital mutilation, 
Also, fewer young girls are being forced into early marriage. More women gain political position. Example, Ngozi Okonjo Iwiala, Dame Pauline Salin, and Kamala Harris, to mention but a few. And laws be made for inclusive governance, which run only, only help our cause in achieving gender equality. Women and women-led organizations such as what we can have and are still playing vital roles to reduce the impact and effects of COVID-19 pandemic. UN Women and Federal Ministry of Women Affairs in collaboration with WOWICA Form 1 Girl Guides have been working on risk communication and community engagement, RCCE, under the UN support to the national COVID-19 multi-sectoral pandemic response. Also, Qatar Center empowered women during COVID-19 pandemic. Education and Nigerian women was priority of our organization, what we can, and we tried to do that through the use of jingles, seminars, flyers, what we can, not only educated the Nigerian women on safety measures and how to keep themselves and families safe, but also the provision of palliative to ease the economic stress of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. International Women's Day is about the liberation of women of all ages, class, and race, giving the woman her voice, a platform to her best. It discusses, discusses how collectively we can tackle the unfinished business of empowering all women and girls now and years to come. This fight isn't just a woman's issue, but an economic one. Collective effort is a prerequisite to achieving a united fight against the oppression of women and the gay child in order to stop this silent war. Only when we will equality and a peaceful, only then will equality and a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world be achieved. I want to use this medium to appreciate all women and girls around the world, starting from our mothers, who stay at home to take care of the family. Every girl child, traders, students, working class women, and women in power. I celebrate you. Well, we can celebrate you. The world celebrates you. Thank you, and God bless us all. Hajia Halima Jibril hails from Mina, Niger State. She has a bachelor's degree in English literature from Amadou Bello University, Zaria. She has done some coursework in project management and MPA at the University of Liverpool and Institute of Administration in Congo, Zaria. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. On behalf of the Federation of Muslim Women's Associations in Nigeria, Form 1, I bring to this forum good wishes from the Nigerian Muslim uh, women. On this day of the International Day of Women, it's important that as a country, as a community, we look at those issues that hamper the development of women. And one of these is education, education of the girl child. Uh, according to 2018 data from the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, 13.2 million children are out of school in Nigeria, and 60% of this lot are girls. Uh, 
uh, this is an indication that a lot needs to be done to ensure that you know we bring more girls to school and uh, we also do a lot to ensure that uh, the out of school girls out of school children are reached so that uh, we ensure that they do not lose access to basic education education is the foundation for everything in life education is the uh, start of the building block that makes uh, a whole human being so we should be emphasizing girls education as key to the overall development of families and communities you know and our nation nigeria we therefore call on all parents to support the education of the girl child we also appeal to governments at all levels to open up access for girls to education let's actualize the concept of the free basic and um, free and compulsory basic education uh, policy that we have yes education is free it is compulsory but here it is we are not fully enforcing uh, that policy especially at the community level at the rural level where parents have to choose between sending girls to school or sending them to hawk on the streets. Uh, this portends a lot of danger for the girls. It increases their vulnerability. And it, all, it, it is also exclusive in the real uh, uh, meaning of the word. So uh, on this occasion, we look forward, Form 1 looks forward to building partnerships with the relevant um, organizations and NGOs uh, to ensure that we bring more girls to school and to appeal to government to ensure that uh, children of all ages that uh, require basic education have access to quality basic education. Thank you. Join us on our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash c slash ufuk dialogue.